Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and welcome to the eighth episode on how to write a high school lab report. Today we're taking a look at graphing. I took a lot of this information from a book called The Basics of Data Literacy, and if you're interested in graphing and you're interested in data management or analysis, come ask me in class and I can show you this book. So we'll start off with the types of variables. If you watch the video on, t uh, on titles, and hopefully you watch that video, uh, you would have seen this section already. If you remember all the types of variables, you can skip forward to the section after this one. Otherwise, if it's new to you or you need a review, then keep watching this section. So the first type of variable is an independent variable. And this is the thing that the scientist changes, or sometimes it's called the cause. So let's say a scientist had three flowers and it gives them, or he gives them different amounts of water. So one gets a certain amount of water, second one gets twice as much water, and the third one gets three times as much water. The thing that changes is the amount of water, that's what the scientist is controlling, so that's the cause, that's the independent variable. The dependent variable is the thing that the scientist is measuring, or sometimes it's called the effect. So let's say this scientist is going to measure how tall those flowers grow based on the amount of water, then the height is the dependent variable because that's what he's measuring. And then finally, there's something called a confounding variable or an interfering variable. That means the same thing. Um, these are things that have an effect that's very similar or exactly the same as what we're measuring, but it's due to a different independent variable. So for example, uh, let's say there's some sunlight. If one of the plants is very close to the sun, another one is further away, and maybe the third one is in the shade, at the end of the day, we can't say whether it was the amount of water or the amount of sun that affected the plant's growth, because both of them can affect the plant's growth. So normally we would have to control for these variables and make sure they all get the same amount of sunlight to make sure that our experiment is proper. So there are three types of data that we need to know about. The first one is called nominal data. An example of that one would be measuring the lengths of carrots grown in different types of soil. Now, these are unrelated independent variables. So we have soil and we have sand. These are not related to each other in any logical or mathematical way. So to uh, compare these types of data, we would use a bar graph. We can compare them, but they it's not like soil or sand has a number associated with it. So we can only use a bar graph that has the data, to, da, excuse me, the data labels for each. And this shows the difference between the different categories, but we can't really make any predictions. We couldn't say based on this information what would happen if we tried to grow uh, a carrot in rock. We couldn't say from this information how that would turn out. The next type is ordinal data, and an example would be the small, medium, and large coffee cups. These are related to each other, but not in a way, sorry, these are independent variables that are related, but not in a way that's measured. So we can't say that the difference between small and medium is 100 milliliters, and between medium and large is also 100 millimeters milliliters, my goodness. So we might have the difference between 50 milliliters and the next one might be 100 milliliters. So there's different amounts. There isn't an arithmetic relationship. So these ones we're going to use a line graph. So here we can state the values along the bottom, the values along the side, but we can't state for sure that these are going to have a certain uh, very specific relationship. So although we can make predictions, our predictions are not as solid because we don't know for sure the amount that those coffee cups changed. If we had an extra large coffee, we couldn't predict the size of that coffee. And the last type is the interval ratio data. In this uh, example, you're measuring the horizontal distance of a thrown ball and how far it travels over time. In this case, independent variables have a direct arithmetic relationship. So the difference between, let's say we're measuring in meters, the difference between one meter and two meter is the same distance as between two meters and three meters, between three meters and four meters, and so on. It's always different by one meter. So for these, we use scatter plots. These do look very similar to the line graphs. The main difference is that along the x-axis, that's the horizontal one, and the y-axis, that's the vertical one, along those axes, it's very um, set 
interval values along each of them. So it'll always be one meter dis differences or two meter dif differences or you know one second differences or two second differences or whatever the case may be. And these have a very, very strong ability to make predictions. So based on this diagram, at 12 seconds, we would probably have a very good idea of the distance of that ball. So let's take a look at each of these types of graphs and the information we need to know. First thing, you need a descriptive title. The types of titles we use for our graphs are very similar to those that we use for our data tables. So if you don't remember how to write a descriptive table, please re-watch the video on observations and take a look at the section on uh, writing titles for data tables. The next thing, independent variable goes along the x-axis and dependent goes along the y-axis. The axis has a label and when appropriate it has units. So in this case we're looking at the increase in height. Increase in height, height is measured in, well it can be measured in different uh, units, but in this case it's measured in meters, so it's given brackets with meters. If that wasn't written there, we wouldn't know if we are measuring in centimeters or feet or some other type of unit. Also it has values, so we need to know what those uh, what those lines are actually standing for on our graph. So the first line is that one meter, is it five meters, is it 20 meters? We need to know what those values are. And then along the x value, similar things. We're gonna have an axis label, although in this case we don't have any units because these are our, <coughs> excuse me, these are our nominal data, so we don't have units for that one. And we do have labels and we need to include those. And we have a legend so that we can compare the different colors and what those mean. The next ones are our line graphs. So again, a descriptive title, independent along the X, dependent along the Y. We have an axis label with units, and we have values, and that's along the Y axis. And we see the same thing along the X axis. Um, this one here, it depends on the actual um, the actual experiment you're doing. I wrote axis label with units. In this case, there were no units. Tree height, we're saying short, medium, and tall, so we don't have units with that one. So depending on the experiment, you may or may not have units for that. And then here, in between your data points, you're gonna use almost like a connect the dots line. For our scatter plots, again, descriptive title, independent variable along the X, dependent variable along the Y, axis label with units and values and then the other axis with units and with labels units and values this one both axes must have the units because both both axes have um, values that are related to each other arithmetically here we draw our individual data points and then we draw a line of best fit now a line of best fit is a line that tries to go through as many of the points as possible and the points that it does not pass through, you try to have the same number above and below and the same distance between those points and the lines. So if you're using a graphing software on the computer, it will draw the line for you. If you're doing it by hand, use a clear ruler so that you can see through it and try a few variations until you get one that seems to have the best amount of points going through and the, the same number above and below and the same distance above and below. Now the last thing we'll look at is formatting the axis. If we have a picture like this, where we've got all of our points crammed up into one corner, we want to try and spread those out. Because right now it looks linear, it looks like it's in a straight line, but we don't know for sure. So we want to spread out our axes, both our X and our Y axis, so that we can actually see the data a little bit better. On a computer, you can just choose the starting point of your axis and it'll shift all the values over. So you can do that for both the X and the Y axis. If you're doing it by hand, you'll just put zero at the origin. That's where those two lines connect to each other, you'll, where your X and Y axis connect to each other. You'll put a zero there. You'll draw a little sort of squiggly line, and then you can start at the number where you want to go. If you're using a computer, it'll just shift the values for you without that little squiggly line. So here we can see our data much better. We have a better idea that yes, it does in fact look linear. And so we have a better idea of what's happening in our experiment. All right, that's all for graphing and that's all for now. Bye-bye.